Humankind is always very curious about different places and faraway places, and we are very curious about whether there may have been life, or maybe, or if there is life somewhere on other planets. And Mars is a good place to try to find traces of ancient uh, bacterial life because uh, we know that uh, in past uh, Mars had flowing water, it had much thicker atmosphere, more, more benign temperatures, so it is very interesting to go there and see if we can actually find some traces of ancient microbial life. There are plans of sending people there someday, and because of that we need to learn more about it. We need to learn about the circumstances that wait uh, the people when they get there. Researching Mars is very important for our planet too because Mars and Earth are so similar and by studying Mars we can learn also new things about our planet. Mars is uh, not only the, one of the closest planets to Earth in our solar system, it's actually the most similar one to Earth. Even if it looks different, and there are big differences too, but the basics are the same. They are both rocky planets, they both have atmosphere. Uh, the tilt of the axis of both planets is almost the same, which means that the atmospheres uh, behave in a similar way. Both planets have seasons, and the seasonal variations. There are several uh, special features of Mars compared to Earth. For example, Martian atmosphere is much thinner than Earth's atmosphere, so the surface pressure is only about 1% of that of the Earth pressure. Uh, the composition of the atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide on Mars, 96%. Uh, the temperatures are also quite different. Mars is a much colder planet. Even if in the summers in the equator the temperatures can rise as high as uh, plus 15, plus 20 degrees Celsius, in the night time uh, the temperatures already drop to minus 70 and even lower. And in the winter time, and especially close to the poles, the temperatures are even lower than that. They can go as low as minus, minus 120, minus 130 degrees Celsius. There is no flowing water on Mars, but there is water ice, uh, some uh, amounts all over the planet in the rocks, but then there are ice caps, polar ice caps, just like on Earth. Uh, cons they consist mostly of water ice, but on top of them is a lay layer of carbon dioxide ice, or dry ice, as we call it on Earth. The challenges for doing measurements on Mars are related to the really uh, difficult circumstances on Mars compared to Earth. So it's very cold, uh, so the instruments have to be able to survive very cold temperatures. There are dust storms on Mars, local dust storms happening now and then, and then usually about every five years there's a global dust storm that covers most of the planet, if not all the planet. Also landing on Mars is uh, quite a dangerous uh, phase of the mission. The instruments have to survive all mechanical uh, vibrations and shocks that go with the landing and the launch of the, of the rocket. We cannot go there to fix the instruments if something goes wrong. They have to be very, very reliable. We have to be sure that they work no matter what. There is already working Finnish technology on Mars and more is on their way in, in Perseverance rover. Finnish Meteorological Institute together with Weisla company have developed uh, pressure and humidity instruments to be used in Martian conditions. The first successful Mar Mars mission carrying Finnish technology was Phoenix Mars Lander and the next one was MSL Curiosity, and there the pressure and humidity sensors are still working this day. And now, with Perseverance bringing another pressure and humidity sensor to a different part of the planet, we will actually have a miniature network of pressure and humidity measurements on Mars. MSL Curiosity has 
rode on Mars already for eight years, but it still has covered just a tiny spot of the whole planet. So Mars is a very big planet and one a rover, one lander cannot cover it. It is important for atmospheric observations to have uh, several measurement points in the atmosphere of a planet at once, because that's the only way to get more understanding about the behavior of the atmosphere and its dynamics. Just like on Earth, it is not enough to have a one weather station. We have many weather stations in many places around the globe. And for Mars, it's the same. To get the full understanding, we need more measurement points. We need more simultaneous measurements. The data is sent directly to Earth, but then on Earth the scientists can put all the data together and learn more than when we just have a one measurement point. Perseverance rover, a sister rover to MSL Curiosity, lands into Jezero Crater on Mars. And Jezero Crater was chosen as the landing spot for Perseverance because uh, it is thought to be an ancient lake with an ancient river delta. And it, we know that it contains a lot of clay minerals and uh, that's a sign that there has been a lot of flowing water in the past of Mars. If uh, we are looking to find some signs of maybe uh, ancient microbial life on Mars, this would be the best place to find it. For Finnish Meteorological Institute, the most important thing to study about Mars is its atmosphere and especially comparing the atmosphere of Mars to that of Earth. Mars and Earth's atmospheres behave in a quite a similar way, but on Earth we have water, we have vegetation, cities, all kind of uh, extra noise that covers uh, some of the processes which are not so easy to see in the atmospheric behavior. So that's why we can use Mars as a kind of a simplified model uh, where there is no noise uh, caused by vegetation and water. And so by studying Mars and Martian atmosphere, we can actually learn new things about Earth atmosphere. <laughs>